Hi, this is Sandy. This week we're working on the screen. It's a really long video. So my suggestion is that you take and you watch the first half of it, and then you watch the second half. When you work it, just do the drawing, and then the next time, put the color into it. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm ready to start here. We are working on, on the screen. The screen is a picture that was done in 1893, and it's so it, it falls in a bunch of different categories. But the one we're going to work on right now is expressionism. Expressionism is showing how you feel. It's your emotions. You're expressing your emotions. He saw a Munch saw a, a red sunset and the clouds turned blood red. And so he was reacting to the clouds turning that color. And it will, for him, it was a bad omen. He had just committed his sister in an asylum, mental asylum. And so things weren't going very well for him. And you can see how that would be a bad omen. And you can see how he's expressing himself. So we are going to be doing that. We're expressing ourselves, but we're going to help him do his job. His original painting was 36 inches by 29 inches. So 29 inches down here, 36 inches up here. And it was, um, it was done on cardboard. So... We aren't going to use cardboard. You're going to use your sketching paper or you're going to use a paper with a tooth in it. You know, not real smooth paper because our chalk isn't going to isn't going to fit to smooth paper. So, let's get started. What are we going to do? I've got my ruler here. I want you to look at your picture on the screen of of the screen and I want you to Look at how everything relates to perspective. If Munch is that big, the people walking away from him are that big. So we are going to use this right here to figure out our perspective on our paper. So I'm going to, I know the angle is about like that. So I'm going to put the angle out here and I'm going to have it start right about there. Light lines. Okay, that was one rail was up here. And then there's another rail down here. And it, this would be my perspective is way down here. So I don't have to, to move too much. Here's another rail. And I'm not going to draw that in because these rails are getting skinnier and skinnier. And that last one, we don't see all of it. Well, there's only three rails. So we don't see, oh, the, now we've got the, the boardwalk. Okay, let's look at the relationship of our character, our main character. He's pretty much in the middle of the canvas or board, and the others are back here. If these figures are one inch, he is one, two, three inches. So the ratio is one to three. So if I come down here and I know that my character's over here, which means that this isn't the right perspective. Now that's the right perspective. So if I know that I make these guys 
about two inches tall. Well, let's make them two and a half inches tall. And the other guy next to him is about the same. So two and a half inches, two and a half inches, they're walking together. Then three times two and a half inches, my main character is going to have to be about six inches. Which means he's going to go from here to here. Pretty much in the center. Now over here, we have land. And back here, we have almost a mountain hills. But I, I want to give my sky more attention. So I'm going to pull my hills down. Pretty much right there. Okay, and my land will come out and go in that way. I want to get these in pencil because I'll know exactly where I'm going when I start using my chalk. Okay, my water runs from these guys here and it comes around to about there. Okay, this all works for me. Now let's get it on in chalk. I want you to refer to you, the picture so that you can see it. Let's start with the back and work forward. So I'm going to move this down so you can see it better. The colors in the sky were red, orange, yellow, and white. I might want to start with the white just to make sure that I get it in there. Remember, we're on the side of the chalk. Now, the sky isn't straight lines. The sky is wavy lines. Now I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go in with yellow next. And maybe right about here. I'm going to put the yellow and maybe around the hills. And then I'm going to come in with my eraser and I'm going to erase my marks because I know that this is a, these are going to show. Okay. I'm going to pick out a couple different colors of orange, going down to red. I'm not going to put any pinks in here, but I might put a couple pieces of blue and get some more yellows. So I've got a nice spread of chalk here. And I'm going to just put it right here. Let's start out with the blue. Notice that my lines are not straight. I can go up into that yellow. There's no right or wrong here. Maybe it's time to get a different color. Let's get some of that red in here.
The painters in the 19th century, when I say the 19th century, it doesn't mean it's 1950, 1960. 19th century is in the 1800s. They, they either painted real loose, like this, or they went the other way and everything had a, a purpose. That was realism. The painting that we're doing here, or the picture we're doing here, is not realism. This person is expressing how he's feeling. And he's expressing it in his art. We're going to use his expressions today. Just because they're kind of fun. You know this man was was not happy. He was probably a little scared. And it shows in his painting. He used oils. Okay, now I'm going to take my finger and I've got a tissue here. And I'm going to just move with my finger. When I get too much built up, I'll wipe it off. I don't want to lose that white. And I don't want to mix that blue in with that green. I mean with that yellow because then we get green and I really don't want a green sky. Notice how I'm not going this way. I'm going this way. The same direction my sky flows. Now, given that this is the sky and I just blew it off and I'm to the edge of my paper. Okay. Can you feel his emotions in that? He saw that sky and he thought, oh, it's a terrible omen that this is happening. So he expressed every bit of his feelings in this paint, in this picture. Okay, let's move on to the hills. Look at the pic, look at the screen and tell me what colors you see there. You're going to see blues, a couple yellows because they're blue and yellow does make green. And maybe some purples, some dark blues. So we've got a number of blues here. We've got some purples. I'm not going to put black in there. And we've got some grays. So let's start with a blue. These are pretty much down here. They're nice and straight, which is interesting. So his horizon, he still felt okay with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get another blue in here. Something that the color can bounce off of. But when he got to his hills, they kind of started curving around. A lot of times, artists will use feelings and emotions to express what's going on in their world today. We know that Munch at this time was not very happy. He was scared for his sister. I'm going to put some white in here. And I notice his, this one is a little bit darker gray. Or darker blue, so I'm going to 
add some more blue in here. Nice thing about chalk is we just we can just keep putting it on top of each other. Okay, when we go to spread this out, we can't get into our sky. We gotta be very careful. So first I'm gonna blow it off. Next, I'm going to be very careful that the sky and the hills don't really intermix. And blow that off. Okay. Munch was at a place called there where there were cliffs. These were the cliffs, and this was the water. So we are actually going to make this look like there's a cliff over here. The way we're going to do that is I'm going to take some browns and I'm going to pull it out like that. And maybe in those browns are some blues. Okay, now. On the top of the cliff, there was a lot of um, heather, green grasses. So we're gonna put that up here. Once again, we are using nice curvy lines. Okay, those lines are gonna come underneath our railing. So let's leave room for a railing. And on right above our boardwalk. I'm showing you where they are, but let's go ahead for right now and stop right there. Maybe I want some different greens. See how I just go over the other chalk? I might need some brown greens. Now, since this is a sunset, it's probably a little darker. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some blue in there. Okay, I like the way it looks, but in the back here, I've got to be able to see the difference between my my um, my hill, my cliff, and my hills in the background. So I'm going to take some yellow, because I know yellow is going to pull this out. So I used yellow. Then I'm going to come in with a little bit of white. Now, I'm going to go ahead with, with the lay of my land, where it's curving, and with my strokes that I put in there, and I'm going to follow them around, and I'm going to make a curve. So people express themselves through art, and they'll express themselves through literature. Okay, now I'm going to come and I'm going to Highlight this with white. Okay, this is making a mess. But we see our cliffs. Okay, now we're going to have water. I've got my water line right here. 
So I don't want to get into that, but I want to give it a shoreline. But I want to make it a darker shoreline. So I'm going to go back with this blue. And I'm not going to go be underneath this railing yet. Back there, I might go even with purple. Something to make that nice and dark back here. Okay, it's getting kind of dark, so I'm going to go pick up another blue. And where it's kind of light, I might put some of that in. I'm going to get some whites in here. It comes around that way. If you could see me right now, I am not sitting down. I find I'd work better if I'm standing up. Okay, when we get to this rail, I want to be careful. I want to get my fingers nice and clean so that I don't get too much of this in the rail. All right, I want to make sure it's more white down here. There. Because I want to make it look like maybe it was water at one time. Pull that up away from there. But I do want this edge to go down. So how am I going to push that edge down? I'm going to get this darker gray right here. It's not black. It's a darker gray, and I'm going to push it out towards my water. Okay. Now I want to work on the water. It's a lot of whites, a lot of yellows, cream colors, and a lot of blues. So there's a, let's call this an eddy. We're not going to worry too much about our people right now. Okay, I'm going to get another blue. I'm going to get a cream color. The important thing here is I don't want to mix the blue and the cream. I'm laying it next to it not on it. Now where that cream is, I'm going to put some white. Okay. Take my finger. Wipe it off and come in here and get those little eddies going. Some more white in here, let the white do the blending. So I really don't want to see that paper underneath here. All right, let's think about our main guy. 
Our main guy was here to here. I'm going to kind of wipe this out because I know that's where he is. And our other guys are over here. We're going to put those guys in first. I'm going to sit down so I can get those guys in. Now when I draw these guys, I'm not going to make a head, an arm, and a leg. I'm going to give a hint of a head and an arm and a leg, and I'm using a navy blue. So there's my head right here. There's my back, which is just a little bit bigger than the head. Okay, and then there's a stick and the stick. That's all I'm doing to get these guys in here. I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a hat on him in a, in a minute. Okay, now here's another guy. Just a head. Just a, not even a round head. Almost a square. Here's the other guy. And here's his legs. Not by a round shape, just by a back and forth shape. I made the shoulders and they come down. And then I just put one stick, two stick, and then filled them up that way. That's all there is to that. It's a big stick man. But I wanted to make sure you saw exactly what I didn't do. I didn't make a head and color it in, make a body and color it in, make a leg and a leg. I didn't do that. Just a stick man. Okay? So. Let's go on. These guys are walking in the distance. Let's get our main character. Look at this main character. Would you look at how greenish gray he is? When I do his body, I'm going to make that figure right there. And I'm going to, for the rest of his body, I'm just going to squiggle it in like I squiggled in the other guys. Not going to be hard. Okay, so let's make this grayish face. And I'm going to use this gray here. And I'm going to pick up the color that was down. So, he has a skeleton-like face. And it comes into an egg bottom. So I could almost put a triangle like that. The head is the most important part of this person. It's about, oh, five times the size of that little head. And it expresses him. So we've got to be sure and get him. I could probably go bigger. That's the nice thing about this is we don't have to go by what we originally 
head down. We can make him bigger if we look at it and say, okay, it's going to be kind of hard to get his expression in there. All right, that's his, his head. We can um, come in and do the details later. He's going to have a neck. And then he's going to come in with clothes. Now, I can use the blacks and the browns and the blues, but I think I'm going to use that gray. And I'm going to start up at his neck right there and just go out a little bit and come straight down on the other side. I'm going to start below his neck, right there, and I'm going to come out and I'm going to go back down so it looks like he is a wavy guy. I didn't put arms on him yet, and there's a reason. I want the arms to look like they aren't part of his costume. I want it to look like they're coming out. Okay. I'm going to use some of the reds that I used because I think it's important to tie this together. So I've got some of the reds in the sky and I'm going to use some of the oranges in the sky too. This one right here is a good one. I can recreate exactly what this artist does, but at some point it becomes what I do. And I think that's important. I'm going to get some of that blue in here. Going to give him a neckline. Now I'm going to take and blend it with my finger. And see all those real bright colors that we put in there? They aren't bright anymore, are they? Okay, now I'm going to put his arm in. So I'm going to take this lighter color here because I want it to come. I want that to be the first thing I see. And it's going to come down here and then it's going to come up like that. And this arm here is right here. Now I'm going to take this other color here. And I'm going to have to switch to a white. Because I want it to come out of his outfit. Now, that gray that we used for his hands, or for his face, we're going to use for his hands. They start down here, and they come up, and they go around his face. Okay, we're going to spend some time here, because we've got to make it look like those hands in, are in there, away from the face. So we're going to give it a little bit of a shadow there on his face. Be real careful with this black. It'll overpower this picture real fast. And his neckline is here.
and his lower face is there. See how I switched hands? I didn't want my hand, other hand getting in there. It, their fingers are all dirty. Now we could give him a greenish cast, just like his picture does. His picture has, I might use this green, lay some green in here. Maybe I'll lay some yellow in here. All right. We're going to leave him alone now, and we'll fix him up later. Okay, let's start working on this railing. The railing is browns, oranges, and yellows. The outside of that railing, where it sees the light, is a yellow. Might have a little bit of a brown here. You don't want to color it all in. Remember, as they go farther and farther back, you're not going to see much of that railing. Okay, let's get the next railing down. It's going to be lighter on the top, darker on the bottom. So let's put it in lighter on the top. Darker on the bottom. I sure am glad I didn't finish all of that underneath here. I'm going to take some of that white that I've been using to blend and I'm going to get that top the way I want it. Okay, we've got one more rail. My perspective tells me that I'm going to see about an equal amount of top to bottom. And I need it darker as it comes down. Okay, let's get the, the boards in. Maybe they're going to be, first of all, I'm going to go back to these guys and I'm going to make them a little bit longer with the same color blue I was using. There we go. I want them to be able to stand. Now I'm going to come in with my different colors here. 
my different browns. And I'm just going to very loosely put these in here. Notice how I'm really flat on this chalk. If I were to try to get it up on the tip, it would break. I think my my um, lines and my boardwalk needs a little bit of dark in it. Let's see if this is dark enough. That really isn't dark enough. So I'm going to go with this really dark, dark. Because every now and then we have a board. Okay, not liking how these guys flattened out. So I'm going to come back in here and make them a little bit bigger yet. And we know that the shadow from the sun set would probably be coming this way. So I'm just going to give them a shadow. Maybe that'll help. I think it did. Okay, let's go back and finish up our areas between these slats. I don't want to make them all a flat blue. I'm just putting blue here and there. And then I'm going to come in with maybe this color. That's my water still. At the end of this, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make the edges a little more defined. Okay, on this side, I'm going to have some of that blue. Some of that green. And I'm going to just keep coming back down here like that to finish that side off. And you can't see what I'm doing there. So, there.
Don't want it to get boring though. Okay, let's talk about how to finish this up. We've got him, I like the way he is, but I would like this outer arm defined a little bit more than it is. So I'm gonna go back to that dark. And I'm not outlining, but I guess you could say I, I just outlined him. Just on the outer edge. Okay, we're gonna to have to come up and we're gonna to have to get these hands so I can see that these hands are coming in. Maybe I'm gonna give this a little bit of an outline too. Underneath his arm, give him a little bit of a shadow so I can tell his arm is there. There, now I can. Okay, my fingers are getting really, really messy here. And I'm going to have to clean everything up. I want to come over here, I'm trying to do this so you can see, and I really want this boardwalk to be defined with a line so these guys don't look like they're going into the water. And these boards Okay, it doesn't show it, or it does show it, but it, they aren't real prominent. But remember our perspective. We are standing straight up this way. So any line that we put in here has to stand straight up. Got to tie these boards together. And there's going to be an outer edge to these boards. There. Now that looks good. I'm going to put some lighter color right here to make it look like it's underneath there. And now we've got to do our eyes and our nose and our mouth. We know the mouth is going to be here. We can use a pencil if we want. Once you use the pencil though, you've got to be careful because you can't erase. His nose is really two nostrils. And his eyes are comma mark here and here. Now for the inner eye, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a piece of green and just give a shadow. And I might take some yellow and give him a highlight here. I might do that to his hands too.
Let's see, maybe there's a light green. Maybe that'll do it. Oh yeah, that's what I needed to pull that out. I like that. Come underneath his neck, give him more of a, a neckline. And there you go. We have created art. We've expressed ourselves. And you can tell we're terrified in this picture, can't you? Doesn't he look terrified to you? I could keep playing with this and playing with it. Now, you've used, you've used chalk. You've got chalk all over everything. Everything has to be vacuumed or wiped with a wet cloth. This needs to be sprayed with some of the, the um, the varnish spray, because this will get very messy and all over everything. But imagine, you can create your own feelings. We are gonna do, the next time, another expressionism piece, and we're gonna express ourselves about COVID. That should be interesting. See you then.